Hi everyone, welcome back to A Sky Full of Stars Interstellar Focus Episode 11. So it is now home, sweet home, Frakito, and maybe for Hikari's side because they both brought in belongings and some furniture. But anyways, this place is a big upgrade for Akito given that he hasn't lived in a proper home for a long time. So the last time was with his grandfather who passed away and if you remember from the original A Sky Full of Stars, Akito was living in the astronomy club room for his school and that place is not a proper place to live. But thankfully, Mother Satome offers him a room in her house, so on the second floor of his workplace, so the Satome stop by convenience store. And now Mother Satome offers him this house and it does feel grand to him. So anyways, Hikari, Sai, and Akito just finished playing through the second draft of the astronomy quiz. So if you remember, Hikari hated the first draft because she's the enemy. So let's see how Hikari feels about this revision. So she manages to clear the game after solving all the problems. But this was a happy ending, I suppose, says Saya. Reading the ending, Saya has a complicated expression on her face. So the hero of the Earthlings who travel to the galaxy together to protect the Albiro Princess. And the Chasing Galaxy Emperor, the Comet Alien. So the three play a love triangle like a daytime melody, eventually causing a space war involving the whole galaxy. And the last one is an option, and you have to choose one or the other. Hmm, so the involved people are a nuisance. And for Sai, it's like, hmm, so which one do you pick, Akun? Um, I picked neither. Well, anyways, so the story is messy and I didn't read it seriously. So basically, it was hard to follow along. So it wouldn't have made a difference, anyways. So it makes Sai upset. It's like, well, I wish there was an ending that would make everyone happy. Well, certainly. Hey, Akun, so I wonder if we can be happy together. So, Saya hears sadly, and it is very difficult to answer. Becoming a mustard. It's a mess from the original setting that the convenience principle, you can't afford it. So I'm not sure what that means. <sighs> I guess, says Saya. <laughs> okay, so more edits. And Hikari writes on the pages with a red pen. 
Okay, so anyways, it's, it's time for lunch, so let's make rice. Hikari, help? Okay, says Hikari. Um, I'll help you too, says Akito. Wakun, so you rest, so stay here. Yeah, so the kitchen is small and it won't fit all of us in there. So they went to the kitchen together. So it's more like Saya wants to surprise Akito and she wants only Hikari to know what she's making. So I have to show Akun that I can make other dishes besides noodles. Hmm, so Sayatan is motivated. Don't run idle and fail. Hey Hikari, don't be loud, so you'll let Akito or Akun know what we're making and the surprise will be blown. And it makes me feel strange when I listen to the sounds of cooking while holding my hand. Hmm, so something good like this. And it is nice to have others in your personal space. So from now on, I thought that if I return to the life of sleeping in the school club room, I will be lonely. Okay, so now Akito is working a shift at the Satome stop by and buy convenience store. So his part-time job. And as usual, I'm at the counter for the cash register and Sai and Hikari are studying at the cafe corner. With Miharu bothering Hikari, so Hokiboshi, I can't do this. So even though I went to college, it doesn't mean that I can be excellent and do all these problems. Hey, so look at me, you know, I went to college and this is what I ended up being as, so it's not all the glitz and glory. So there's no positive benefits to going to college and so let's stop studying and play together. And it's pretty much Miharu tempting Hikari to move away from studying. Hmm, so the devil's whisper from a while ago. And just like a devil, Sensei is whispering in various ways to possess Hikari and corrupt her. Or basically trick her by giving her all these really... I'm not sure how to say it, like tempting... So tempting ways to enjoy yourself. So Sai is like, hey sensei, you know, don't be irresponsible. Do you want me to be angry? I'm sorry. And at Sai's scolding, so Sai scolded a little seriously and sensei withdrew. I look at the clock in call. Hmm, so it's about time to go home. Hmm, it is true, says Ikari. Well, there is no clear curfew, but 
she seems to be angry if it gets too late. However, Hikari stays with me when I'm sly or so Sai and me are looking at the clock or Sai and I. Well, it is annoying to go home right now and I wish I can stay next to Akito. Hey, so don't say stupid things. Do you want me to get angry for that as well? Hmm. So what does Sai get angry about? So I'm not talking about staying with my boyfriend in front of my ex-teacher. So basically, you're going to flirt and show off and make me feel bad. Hey, so which mouth do you say, this person? I'm sorry. So, okay, let's go home then, says Saya. Yes. Hikari is dissatisfied while cleaning up her study tools. Okay, so all three of them are outside. So the reason why Hikari can't stay over is because she will cling to Akito and for Sai it's like, hey Hikari, you can't take advantage of me while I'm not here and also you need to study. And for Miharu, it's more like she's jealous and you know, you're going to show off and make me feel bad. So anyways, so the train will come in a few minutes and if you, Hikari, miss the train, you have to wait for another 30 minutes. And what about Kotaro? Oh, so Kotachan. Sai shakes his tail and strokes Kotaro, who approaches her. Akito. Um, Akito? Says Hikari. Hikari regretfully holds my hand. <laughs> hee hee hee. So, while Sai tends to Kotaro, I tend to you. <laughs> hey, no fair! So, me too! Saya, who was stroking Kotaro, notices it and comes here. Okay, so me too. And Saya holds the other hand. Um, Saya, so is it okay if I don't send you home tonight? Yeah, so it is still early, so I'll be okay. Well, it's good, and I wish I lived nearby. Oh, so look, the train's coming. So, you know, if I lived nearby, then I could be close to Akito for a little longer and not have to worry about the train. So, at this rate, so Hikari might miss this train and will have to take the next train. So anyways, let's see. So Hikari has to let me go. Well, anyways, so goodbye Akito. Bye bye, Aku. Kota-chan mo bye bye. So bye bye Akun. And also for Kota-chan, bye bye as well. Okay, see you later, says Kotaro. 
So be careful when you go home and give me a message once you arrive. Okay, I understand. So good night, says Saya. And now the two of them left. And I suddenly feel lonely. And maybe the same for Kotaro. So after lightly comforting Kotaro, who also looks lonely, I return to the store. And here we see a disgruntled Miharu. So inside the store, Sensei is quiet. Hmm, so such a bittersweet youth, and you are showing off, and you are holding hands in public. Hey, please don't look. So, it can't be helped because it was right through the glass and you were doing it in public, so you can't tell people not to look. So, the teacher is eating ice cream without permission while being disappointed. So Mihara didn't pay for it, and even though her mother owns this place, it doesn't give Mihara the right to take anything she wants. Okay, so I'll make a note of it on her bill. And then I went back to studying again. So thankfully, at this time, there are almost no customers except when the train arrives. So. Lots of free time for Akito. So my free time is used for studying and I'm sorry to be paid hourly. And then the teacher Miharu comes over and crouches down and puts her chin on the counter. And she stares at me. And it's going to make it hard for Akito to study. Hey, so what are you doing? Um, nothing. Well, I understand that Takechan is not going to deal with you and you're bored. So recently, Takeichi does not seem to come to this shop even if I call him or message him. And I'm sure Takichi does not want to deal with Miharu because she keeps borrowing his games and never returns them. And it's like, well, I'm still working on it and I will finish them eventually. And Miharu is pretty much procrastinating. So he has a girlfriend named Jino-san, so it can't be helped. So Jino-san is Nare. So as soon as he found a new woman, he dumped me. I hear complaints and grudges, but I ignore them and continue to study. Hmm. No, so I can't concentrate. And even when Sensei cleaned or bothered Hikari, you can see how amazing Saya, who can keep concentrating. So Saya was able to ignore Miharu and also push Hikari not to be distracted by Miharu. Hey, so Sensei, that posture. So, does it hurt your neck? Well, I'm tired. Maybe it's no good anymore. Hmm. Well, I wish you hadn't done that. And then I sigh. 
And then for some reason, Katara's barking. So is there a customer that he knows? So Kotaro is barking outside. And I put down my mechanical pencil. Hmm, so it is a little early. So I'm going to take the dog for a walk and Sensei, so can you wash the counter or the store number? Mm. Um so I give the apron to Sensei, who responds unmotivated. Hey mother, so can I have a moment? What is it? So I'm going to walk Kotaro, so can you watch the store for me? Or give me the store number? Hey, so where are you going? Or why are you going? Well, you know, you mother, you told me to go out once in a while. Well, I'm sure it's not this time. So maybe other times when Miharu's bored and watching TV. And without hearing any more oppositions, Miharu walks out first with a leash for Kotaro's walk. Huh? Wait a minute. So I'm sure once Miharu returns to the store, she'll be heavily scolded by the mother for walking out without the mother's permission. So anyways, hmm, so outside feels nice. So I was supposed to go on the walk for Kotaro because Sensei annoyed or bothered me while I'm studying and I couldn't concentrate. But instead, she came with me, so... Hmm... If you complain, you should follow me. Hey, you know, you can't be selfish. Right, Katara? Oh. Um, so I'm not sure how Katara responds. Katara also has a trouble face. However, Sensei goes on and on without hesitation. Hey, so where are you going, Sensei? So it's not that, um... It's okay, it's okay. And Sensei goes off the usual walking course and goes even further. And they arrive at the dam. Hey Sensei, so where are you going? Hmm, well, I guess... So beyond this dam is our secret observatory, or the place I am currently living. Hmm, so which one? This one? Well, if you go there, it'll be a forest. So if you go now, you might not be able to leave. So it'll be so dark and you'll get lost. Okay, so this one then. So this path takes Miharu, Kotaro, and Akito to Akito's current place of residence. So Miharu's like, hmm, so this is where you're living. Hmm, so it won't open and it's locked. That's right, so even in a place like this, you need to be careful. Well, after all, 
I am in a position to keep the keys and I can't be careless. So I reluctantly take the key from the post box. Hmm. So you are hiding it in such a place. Well, you know, please don't use it without permission. Okay, I understand. Well, I'm sure Mihara won't listen anyways, and she wants to come in at any time she wants. Hmm. So she does not seem to understand at all. Okay, so open the window on the porch and take Kotaro and go around there. Okay, so let's go, Kotaro. Okay, says Kotaro. So I open the window facing the garden. Hmm. So you were flirting with them here, right? Hey, don't look weird or don't give me that strange expression. Well, it is true, but it's embarrassing to say so clearly. So anyways, so what's wrong, Sensei? So you seem absent-minded. Hmm, well, nothing. So I'm just tired and I need some rest. So Sensei sits down on the porch and she strokes Kotaro's head. Okay, so I'm going to get barley tea now. I brought two glasses of barley tea from the fridge. And Miharu looks up at the sky while drinking cold barley tea with ice. Hmm. So I can see the stars and it's not a good place. Yeah. And then Sensei goes silent. And her profile looks moody. Hmm. So maybe you're angry. So I was silent about this boarding house and living here and the such, right? So I didn't let you know. Well, that's natural. So you hid this place from me and I was kind of upset. Well, I'm sorry, but it seemed troublesome. So, um... So it's not troublesome. I'm hurt. So is that why you wanted to join me in walking Kotaro? Well, you didn't invite me here, so I came here by myself. So I invite myself here. Oh, so you did want me to invite you then, right? I'm sure that's what Mihara is trying to say. But you know, so the air conditioner is not working here and for you sensei, you're not good at hot weather so it's not a place for you and plus you don't like getting out of that house. <sighs> Well, that's right, but you know, you could have at least invited me, so offered me to come, but you didn't do so. So, if you did offer me, then I could say yes or no, and 
that would have made me feel better. Hmm, so this really is an annoying adult. And then the teacher lays down on the porch. But still, you are flirting here. And she hugs Kotaro as if she were holding a stuffed animal. And we see Miharu hugging Kotaro, and I hope she's not she is not hugging him too tightly. Yeah, yeah, I envy you. While hugging Kotaro, rumbling. Well, I'm just myself, and I think this is bittersweet. So anyways, do you do the choo-choo thing? Huh? Wait, choo-choo? So, you already did do a choo-choo with Hokiboshi, right? So, she brought you here for the special moment. So basically, Hikari kissed you, and... Well, I haven't, and... No? Well, it seems like there's not a chance like that. So basically, I have to tend to Sai as well, not just Hikari. But I haven't. Well, tell me that it's a lie. So I'm sure young boys like it. And... They want this kind of desire, so the mumman desire. Hey, so what is that prejudice? So, is it believable? Kotaro has a troubled face saying, well, even if I ask you, or rather, he's being hugged too tightly and is in pain. Kotaro struggles and tries to escape, but Sensei does not let him go. So I think it's like, well, you know, I'm single, so why don't you think about refraining for now? So there's still a lot of time for you for romance. Well, Sensei, so if I refrain, then I won't be able to go out with them for the rest of my life. Well, I'm not saying that I can't get married for the rest of my life. So anyways, are you really dating? Hmm, so am I dating? So, it's always been this way for you and you haven't done any choo-choos yet, don't you? Well, it's because we're a three, so... A three group. And it's hard to get that kind of atmosphere. So we eat and stay together. And we also went to the sea or beach the other day. Hmm, hmm so you're doing the same things as before. So nothing special. And it comes quickly. Well, you know, I am dating and we're also students. And then Sensei 
stares at me as an excuse. So it sounds like I make an excuse to the teacher. So you want a family, not a girlfriend, right? And that sharp point makes me lose words. Well, Sensei, this is painful. But I love Hikari's side as a girl. And even though we did go to the sea or beach together, it wasn't all that great. So there were some problems. Well, basically, Mihar didn't seem to find it exciting or special. So Sensei looks red and turns away. Well, don't tell me if you're shy. So, well, for me, it might be better if you just say that you want a family. So you, you just want Hokiboshi and Amaragawa next to you. So is that a better outcome for you? Hmm. Hey, so don't give me that blank expression. So I'm your former homeroom teacher and I'm taking care of you. So I'm trying to help you in some way. Oh, I see, says Akito. Wow, so I am really hurt. And Kataro licks Miharu. So he licks Sensei's face and comforts her. Uh, well, no, well, that, well, I'm sorry. So it is easy to forget because of my daily routine, but I know my, that my teacher cares about me. Well, even if you are dating as a three, you can't get married together. And with that said, Sensei looks up at the night sky. So looking up, there's Vega and Lyra, Altair and Aqualia, and Dinev and Cygnus. And tonight, three first Magnitude stars are forming a magnificent triangle in the summer starry sky. So right now, the three summer triangles are lined up, but they'll look differently after tens or thousands of years. So... The arrangement of stars is not eternal. And it will move little by little, burn out and disappear, or a new star might be born. So, for example, the North Star. So, it's a star in the center of the heavens that hardly moves, but about 4,000 years ago, a different star played the role of the North Star. So diurnal motion of celestial bodies is a phenomenon that occurs when the Earth rotates, so stars on the extension of the Earth's axis hardly move. And the star on the North Pole side that does not move is called the North Star. However, so the axis of rotation for Earth is unstable and is slightly blurred, so the North Star also changes over time. So basically, the Earth doesn't rotate in a smooth, consistent fashion, so it wobbles around the Sun, and because of that, the axis of rotation changes over time. 
but we're talking like thousands of years. So you won't be able to notice it in our lifetimes. So about 8,000 years later, Dina and Cygnus will become the new North Star. So even the stars cannot stay in place forever. But I wish they did stay the same. Well, Sensei, so if you are worried about me, I think it'll hurt you again someday. And to think that she's shy, so using me as a example or a model. Well, that's how I am as a person, but I'm sure Mihara Sensei is a delicate one. Well, it's not like, like that. So I'm envious of my students living sore, just making a mess. So, do you, you remember the first light event with the Place One telescope? Hmm, so what was that about? Says Miharu. So Sensei bends her head in a way that shows that she doesn't remember. So that was the time when I was the astronomer who never looks at stars and I was scared to face the loneliness behind the telescope and I couldn't see the stars on place one. And then Sensei told me, so even though the stars are out of reach, the light is still there. Mm -hmm. Huh? Wait, so did I say that? And at the time, I couldn't see the stars. The stars are out of reach. So if you notice it, you'll be scared to look up at the night sky. And after looking at a beautiful place, you'll be reminded of the over overwhelming gap between here and there. And that's what the teacher said. So, no matter how much you want it, it's a very distant place that you cannot reach after all. So, it's light years away, at a, min at a minimum. But you know, but still. So... You know still that light reaches here, and that's why you can see it. So no matter how far or how long it takes, as long as the stars are shining, we can feel their existence in this way. And that's why these stars are not fantasies nor fairy tales. So they're real, they exist. Hmm, so isn't that what, what Sensei told me? <laughs> so I think Miharu now remembers. So Sensei looked up at the summer starry sky, which is different from that night, with a slightly sad expression on her face. Hmm, so did I really say that? Wait, so you don't remember, right? No, 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 no. So I do 
remember it, but faintly. Um, I so, I remember taking Kotaro to that place and talking to you who appeared dented. But I told you, so that's a good feeling. Isn't you beautifying your memory? Well, I gradually felt that way. Well, by the way, so when I was a kid, so the Mihara Sensei we admired must have been beautified. Well, stop. So don't overwrite your pure memories with your current impression. Well, I'm sure that's the Mihara that everyone wants to see all over again. The inspiring Miharu as a teacher, not this one, the lazy one who complains about everything. Well, damn, I didn't say it, but it was an important memory for me. Well, anyways, I believe that even the stars can be reached. Really? Is that so? So. All thanks to me, so I did something useful? But anyways, so going back to your threesome relationship. So it's a law that three people can't be married and this has nothing to do with the stars. Okay, so please go then. Hey, 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 so don't kick me up. So, I make Sensei stand up. So, you know, you have to go back and tend to that store. So, oh, so it looks like my walk with Kotaro is over. So, I have to go back and make sure there's somebody at that store. So basically, I can't skip out on my job. But please show me the whole house. So show me what's inside. Uh, no. Catch. You're mean. Well, I'm okay with being a meanie or being stingy or cheap. So I closed the window and locked it. And I tend to to seal my precious memories. Well, that's okay because I know where you hide your keys and secretly I'll come up here on my own and open these windows and doors with the key and see what you have in inside. So give myself a tour. Okay, so I'll hide it somewhere else then. So, Miharu Sensei won't find the key at all. Okay, so let's go home today. So let's go, Kotaro. Okay, says Kotaro. And by coming up here to my house, Sensei seems to be in a good mood for the time being. Okay, so it's now August 12th and it's raining. So going to that first light event with the place one, I could tell going to Miharu was not part of the program. So everyone waited for Akito to show up so that he would be the first person to look through that telescope. But all those fears came into Akito at the last second and he backed out. And it was quite sad to everyone. So that includes Orihime, Honoka, Corona, Hikari, and Saya, and the other leaders of the Six Stars Club. And then Akito went to Miharu to pass time in, just find a way to avoid going to that place one telescope. 
So you want somebody else to be first. So anyways. So it is raining. And tomorrow on the 13th, it'll be the peak time for the Persis meter shower. And it is also the day of the observation party, which doubles as the launch of... So I'm not sure what they mean, the Mitsuraboshi no Kai. So something to do with the Six Stars Club. Or maybe the new Six Stars Club. So this year's Persis Mirror Shower has good viewing conditions and it seems to be a hit ear. Well, I can't help with the weather. And even though I know it, I get nervous. So in the meantime, I'm going to clean up this place and calm down. Hmm, so that Hikari person. So pretty much she leaves a mess everywhere she goes. So as I was cleaning up the mess from Hikari, I found a beautiful color paper behind the shelves. So it is this strip of paper. Oh, so I forgot about this. So Saya brought it. So on the day of the Tanabata, Saya brought me this paper and then she witnessed Hikar kissing me and she got shocked and dropped it. And I'm pretty sure Sai forgot about this. Hmm, so I wonder, what did Sai want to write on this slip? And what would Hikari and I write if we did write together? Well... So in the past they wrote one and they wrote, well, I hope us three can stay together all the time. So depending on what we're doing, you'll be out on a rainy day. And so this guy won't be in play until next year. So, I'll put it back somewhere, but I don't know where to hide this. And no matter where I put it, I'm sure Sai or Hikari can find it, and it's kind of awkward. Well, let's see. So I had a small piece of paper to write my wishes on. Okay, so it is now August 13th, so I'll go ahead and stop here for this episode. So I'm sure Sai did want to celebrate the Tanabata, but then because of the Hikari surprise, Sai forgot about it. So also for Miharu, even though she can be quite annoying, she does have one big concern that's legit. So. I don't see that you, Hokiboshi, and Maragawa are dating. So all of the things that you've been doing, it's kind of like you're still friends. So pretty much Akira has to find some way to make it look more than just being friends or buddies. And I wonder what he'll do. So anyways, look forward to the Persis Meteor Shower in the next episode. And with that in mind, I'll see you later.